Hi this is Debbie and today I have a tutorial over at Waffle Flower that I thought you would like to see here too. I'm going to be softly watercolouring the new Waffle Flower Big Bear and Bird stamp set. Before I start stamping I like to work out where I want the images to be to make sure they're going to fit nicely on the card. So I've placed a piece of five and a half by four and a quarter watercolour card into the Mini Misty and I've placed the Big Bear and Bird in the middle with the two plant sprays going either side. The bear's going to hold the present and then I'm going to have the sentiment underneath. For now I've removed the present and the sentiment and I'm going to stamp the big bear and bird and the two plant sprays. I've closed the door of the misty to pick up the stamps where I'd aligned them and then I'm going to stamp them in some antique linen distress ink. This ink will give me an outline to work with but because it is both light in colour and reacts with water then as I start watercolouring the ink will blend into the paint to give a no line watercolour look. Once I stamped the image I could see where the outline was but it wasn't very clear so I decided I was going to stamp it again to make sure that I had a clear outline to work with. And that's one of the benefits of having a stamp positioning tool such as the Misty is that you can stamp an image multiple times to make sure you get a good impression. I've lined up the present so that it looks like the bear's holding it and I've stamped that again in anti-glin and distress ink and I've also added the little heart images coming from the top of the bird there. If you've not checked out Big Bear and Bird before, I highly recommend that you do. This is their Instagram feed and as you can see it's filled with beautifully softly watercoloured images with muted tones and I wanted to capture that feel in my painting today. When you first get some new watercolours it's a good idea to experiment with what other colours you can make from the colours that you've got and I created a grid using just 12 watercolours and as you can see by combining two colours in different amounts you can get a whole rainbow of other colours which can act as a reference point when choosing a colour for your painting. Normally my watercolour palette mixing area is covered in paint. I don't clean it up, it's lovely and messy and I love it like that. And I just, when I want to start a new colour, I just pick a spot and start mixing. And normally I keep my mixing palette off to the side, off screen. However, I have had some requests to see me mixing colours and so I've cleaned up the palette today to start with a blank slate and I'm starting to mix up the colour for the bear. From my colour chart I've picked out that I like the mixture of ivory black with yellow ochre to give a muted brown that I thought would go well for painting the bear. I'm going to start by painting an outline of the brown around the edge of the bear and then blend that in with water towards the centre. I'm using a small brush, this is a Winsor & Newton Series 7 size 00 and I find that helpful particularly when you're colouring in the smaller areas such as the leaves and flowers. I will be going over this area several times and adding deeper shadows However, already you can see that the antique linen distress ink is starting to blend into the watercolour to give that no-line watercolour look. I'm going to speed this video up because I think it took me about an hour to paint this card and that's too long a video to share with you here. But just so you know, this is sped up four times faster than real-time speed. I'm working my way around the edge of the bear, adding the paint towards the edge and then blending in with the water, dotting back in paint along the edges so that you're getting that deeper area around the edge with a lovely blending in towards the centre. I'm trying to find that balance between getting some depth and detail into the watercolouring while still getting that softly muted watercolour look of the Big Bear and Bird style. I've just added some Daniel Smith Cronacodone Coral for the cheeks, starting to build up some overly rosy cheeks. For the bear, the original colours I used were Schmincke Ivory Black with Schmincke Yellow Ochre. And now for the leaves, I'm using a combination of Schmincke Prussian Blue with Schmincke Yellow Ochre. Again, I'm using an outline of watercolour around the leaves and then blending that in towards the middle. I'm afraid I've had to move my mixing palette off to the side because I started to stick my hand in it. So I've moved that off to the side and I'm now using some Daniel Smith Cronacodone Coral again, and this time for the hearts. And then I'm also going to bring that colour into the flowers as well. I'm keeping this base layer of watercolour quite light because I find it easier to add depth later than it ever is to try and take colour away. For this second type of flower I'm adding a dilute mix of yellow ochre and I'm finding that as the paint is drying that everything is drying back quite pale and so I'm going to go back in and add some extra depth with another layer of watercolour over the top of everything. So I'm going to start with the leaves and I'm bringing in again the Prussian blue mixed with yellow ochre and giving a quick second layer to add some more depth. I've also added a second layer of Canacridone Coral to the pink flowers and I'm now coming in with a much deeper outline to the bear and blending that in towards the middle again. I want to add some definition and depth to make this look three-dimensional. Once the bear was dry I mixed a little yellow ochre with some lemon yellow to give a brighter yellow for the bird and then still using a small paintbrush I started adding some finer details. 
So going in with a light layer of the brown and adding some dash lines to represent the fur of the bear and then going back in with a darker brown to add more detail. I also went back in and painted in a darker vein for the leaves and also some detail on those yellow flowers as well. I wasn't liking the open area of the pink flowers and so I went in with some sepia brown and drew in some circles to add some detail to the flower centres. And in a deeper pink I also added some detail to the petals as well. One final blush to the bear's cheeks and then the only area I hadn't painted was the present and I'd been intentionally leaving this till last because I knew I wanted to paint this in a darker colour and I didn't want any of that bleeding out into the other areas. For the present I used a combination of Schmincke Permanent Carmine with Schmincke Deep Red, painting a light layer for the present, letting that dry and then painting a deeper colour for the bow and I also added some polka dots as well. Once the watercolour had dried, I used for the eyes and the nose of the bear and the bird a Faber-Castell pencil. This is dark sepia and I personally just find it easier to draw in the final details with a pencil rather than try and do them with a paintbrush. And I used the stamp set off to the side just to work out where those needed to be because they had got rather faded with the watercolouring. And while I had my pencils out, I also added a few more details to the other areas of the painting. A little shadow to the bird, I think that's with yellowish green, I think that pencil's called, and some um, dark red for the present polka dots, just to make those more defined. I've placed watercolour back into the Mini Misty now that it's dry, and I'm going to stamp the sentiment. I'm using stone ink from Sansa Stamp. I didn't want a black ink and I thought that that would be too dark so I picked out this nice muted browny grey which I thought went well with the rest of the colours. I think I stamped the sentiment three times to make sure that it was nice and clear and easily legible and then I trimmed off a little from each side of the watercolour piece so that I could mount it onto a five and a half by four and a quarter card and still have a visible border all the way around the outside. I've scored and folded a new Desert Storm card base and then I've added lots of foam adhesive to the back of the watercolour panel so that once I attach it to the card it will keep it nice and flat. And that completes this card in a softly watercolour style of Big Bear and Bird. I'll leave links in the YouTube description below to the products that I've used today as well as a link to the coordinating blog post over at LimeDoodleDesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today and if you've enjoyed this tutorial I'd be delighted if you'd subscribe to this channel. Thanks and I'll see you next time.